Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the program today. Nevada has three major industries, gaming, agriculture, and mining. Today, we deal with mining. Randy Thompson has the rundown. Well, we'll be talking everything from the price of gold to mercury emissions. Today with Russ Fields, the president of the Nevada Mining Association. And coming up on the Power Pundit panel today, Marlene Lockhart, Robert Eithoven, and Bob Kroll. It's all coming up next on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. High-tech companies demand perfect world amenities. They require clean, reliable power, state-of-the-art fiber optic communications, and clean water sources. In a perfect world, companies would have immediate access to rail and interstate freeways. There would be four-lane expressways that shorten shipping times and provide convenient commute routes for valued employees. Well, the future is now, and it's here. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevada. The resort at Red Hawk offers you two great dining choices. Experience David's Grill and Sports Bar or the Steakhouse at Red Hawk. The Steakhouse has received the Wine Spectator Award of Excellence based on a diverse selection of fine wines. To accompany the wines, the Steakhouse serves certified Angus beef steaks in a variety of cuts, fresh fish, chicken, and pasta dishes. For fun and casual dining, come to David's Grill and Sports Bar. David's is open seven days a week, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The resort at Red Hawk. Always the right choice. As an employer, did you know you can be held liable for negligent hiring? A background screening by Employer Links can uncover criminal records like alcohol and drug convictions. It can verify the applicant's education, driving records, and professional licenses. Employer Links can check civil records, registered sex offender records, and social security fraud. Hiring the right person shouldn't be a gamble. Call Employer Links. Employer Links, protecting your investment. My family started this business 27 years ago. We work hard to serve our customers and our community. But it's getting harder and harder to keep the doors open. For example, our workers' comp is going through the roof. Isn't anyone on my side anymore? The Retail Association of Nevada is. If you're a small business owner, we can cut your workers' comp by up to 50%, lobby for your interests, and keep you informed. Put us to work today. is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, uh, we're joined by Russ Fields, president of the Nevada Mining Association. I promise today not to interview myself. Oh, we're cutting him off already. <laughs> we're not letting him talk. <laughs> Good morning. So the price of gold is 468.2 as of yesterday. What does that mean to Nevada, the price of gold? How does that impact mining in Nevada? Well, it means good things. Uh, you know, we've been through some rough times uh, within the last five years. We've seen gold as low as $252 an ounce. Today, at nominally $470 an ounce. There's, there's expansions going on at the mining properties. There's a lot of new exploration activity. A lot of geologists out in the hills looking for new deposits. Uh, of course, along with the higher price of gold, also a lot of the consumables that the mines have to use, like diesel fuel and tires and steel and concrete, all of this stuff is also higher, so those margins aren't as good as you might think, but they're certainly much better than they were a few years ago. Now, how does the federal deficit play into all of this? D does it affect the price of gold? It does to the extent it affects the value of the dollar vis-a-vis -vis other currencies around the world, especially the euro and the yen. Uh, for example, uh, in, in all cases, there's an inverse relationship between the price of gold and the dollar. In other words, when the dollar is low vis-a-vis -vis these other currencies, gold is high. That's because gold is valued in U.S. dollars. 
Interesting. It's funny that we're not on a gold standard anymore, and yet it still plays a role yeah, in our economy. It plays a, like a that. huge role. Yeah. It's probably the biggest driver of the price of gold is what's happening with the dollar. Interesting. You must have been horrified a couple of weeks ago to read the New York Times uh, Sunday Magazine article uh, that talked about uh, the worldwide mining industry. And uh, although it wasn't particularly unkind to the United States, it was unkind to the rest of the world. What, what were your thoughts on that? Well, it, it was not a great morning to wake up and read that, mm -hmm. but um, we did know that it was coming. I had actually had a chance to interview with a writer for the New York Times. and. Um, you're right, there, were, there was not a lot of focus on domestic gold mining, but there was um, primary focus on operations around the world. Well, what's the difference between how we do things here, particularly in the Silver State, and how things are done in the rest of the world? Well, not having had much experience, in fact no experience working overseas, I, I really can't answer you firsthand, except the companies that are mining in Nevada that the major gold producers are also major gold producers around the world. Uh, so I know that they are taking uh, some of the things that they do here in Nevada under our current regulations, laws, and requirements, um, and exporting those kind of operating techniques to other places in the world. So to the extent that uh, they're doing the same things over there. They're using open pit mining methods. They're having to deal with water. They're having to deal with air. They're having to deal with cultures. Um, I think, I hope, they're exporting many of the uh, techniques they use here in Nevada, which is the world's leading, um, well, I'll say the nation's leading producer of gold and, and the world's leading exporter and operator uh, way to mine gold um, in an environmentally friendly way and socially responsible way. So I hope they're exporting that to wherever they go. Actually, I've had numerous conversations with Ann Shonard Carpenter, who does travel the world for mining, and tells me of how the American practices are so much better than the native. And I'd like to get her on the show sometimes. So she's got some incredible stories yeah. of how they've come in and had to just fight almost terrorism among local mines and the way that they the way that they've been practicing and this the deaths that are resolved from them coming in I should say the deaths that are stopped from them coming in and practicing much better practices than the natives have um, there's a huge merger going on with Barrick taking over Placid Dome what, what will be the effects of this and how it affect Nevada from an operating standpoint that that is the actual mines uh, I don't think there'll be much impact at all uh, certainly when you have a combination like that of, of major companies, there's, there's a lot of human resources impacts, but that usually occurs at a more uh, corporate office level. Our, our folks that are at the mines uh, in Lander County, Elko County, Eureka County, they probably won't see that much effect. What it does do when, when you bring that much resource together, uh, in terms of money, technology, know-how and capability, it's, it's probably going to be a benefit to Nevada overall. You, you know, as an observer of the scene, um, you know, really, uh, when we've seen these kind of hostile takeovers before, and this is a hostile takeover, they've, they've rarely been successful, wouldn't you say? Successful from the standpoint of uh, doing what they well, the original originally plan, right? planned to to do. Uh, T. Boone Pickens found this out, didn't he, in the 80s? Yeah. Well, one thing about uh, the mining industry, you, you can't part it out like you can uh, a lot of other industries. In other words, you, you're not going to break apart individual mining properties in Nevada to, uh, to try to accomplish some synergy. So um, if you look at the mergers in the mining industry, Newmont, for example, acquired uh, some significant operations in the in the 90s. Santa Fe Pacific Minerals was one, and what they were able to do was they were really able to get some synergies out of that. They have mines around North Central Nevada, more mines than they would have otherwise had. They have more processing facilities, and they can move the ore around to get the best possible benefit out of it. So there are some possible yeah. synergies. Okay, let's take a break. More with Russ Fields, president of the Nevada Mining Association, one of Nevada's biggest industries, right after this timeout. 
a videotape copy of any Nevada Newsmakers program, call 775-857-2244. The tapes are $20 each, including shipping. For more than a decade, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has been helping the community embrace conservation as a way of life. That includes replacing more than 50 million square feet of grass with water-smart landscaping. During the worst drought on record, watering restrictions and tough landscaping codes have reduced the community's water use by billions of gallons, even as thousands of new residents were moving into Nevada. That's smart water management, and that's our promise to Nevada. So, uh, who do you use for workers' comp? Pro Group Management. Ah, I've heard some good things about them. Oh, you bet. Employee background checks, safety training, claim seminars. Oh, and here's the great part. If you have an issue, they work for you, not against you. Sounds perfect. And expensive. Well, that's the best part. They saved me 30%. I've heard they saved others 50%. Works for me. Pro Group Management. Finally, workers' comp that works for you. Happy Hour at the Pepper Mill. Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And we're talking to Russ Fields, who's the president of the Nevada Mining Association. So I can't help but bring up, since you brought up the New York Times, the Salt Lake Tribune, uh, Tribune has some articles very recently about mercury emissions. Mercury emissions. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. What is the Nevada mining? Com what are Nevada mining companies doing to lower their mercury emissions? Yeah, this is this is actually a good story. About five years ago, the mining industry, the gold mining industry, recognized that. We did have significant mercury air emissions to the point where they actually met with the state regulators, air regulators, and EPA, and they formed a partnership. It's called the Voluntary Reduction Program, and it was strictly that. The four largest producers got together to see what they could do about reducing mercury air emissions. And actually, over those four years, uh, the first four years of the program, they reduced those air emissions of mercury by about 75 percent. The criticism of the program from outside of government and outside of the industry was that it was a voluntary program. Mm -hmm. How can you be sure that this is going to continue? Well, what they've done now is they've worked with, the, the industry has worked with the state and the EPA, U.S. EPA, to arrive at at a set of regulations, uh, mandatory regulations that will go into effect uh, early next year, early 2006, to um, codify really the practices that were put into place with the voluntary reduction program. One thing that that has to be known is that all of the West, um, including Utah, Nevada, Idaho, parts of California, have a lot of naturally occurring mercury. So for Idaho or Utah to point a finger and say, the mercury problems we have here in our state is a result of gold mining in Nevada, mercury doesn't have a fingerprint. You can't say with any certainty that it comes from there. A lot of natural mercury, a lot of historic man-made mercury sources. Uh, but one thing you can say, and I'm very proud to say about Nevada mining, is they've, they've reduced that mercury emission by an enormous amount. And they're, they've gone forward and agreed to more 
regulation and more mandatory regulation. That's a good start. Yeah. A little late, but it's a good start. <laughs> Let, let, let's talk about power. You know, the mining industry, people don't realize this, is one of the largest uses of electricity in the state. And Newmont wants to build a power plant near Elko. How much power is used by the industry? Is it, is it as much as 25% of the power used in the state? I, I have heard that Sierra Pacific Power Company, the purveyor of power here in the north, approximately 25% of their um, load is related to the mining industry. So, so you wouldn't say of the state, but you would say of the north. Um, let me ask you this. There, there is um, a, a opposition to that power plant being built by a San Francisco union. Um, why are San Francisco unions objecting to this power plant? Gee, maybe they didn't get hired. I don't know. <laughs> um, I wasn't aware of that. But, uh, that opposition. My, my, my sources tell me that, so okay, then we'll move on. Um, <laughs> in Eureka County, um, you know, is where a lot of mining occurs, but a lot of the infrastructure needs for that mining are in Elko County. Where are we in terms of, you know, smoothing out the different, or balancing the needs of those two counties? That's That's been a significant question since large-scale gold mining started because you're right Sam uh, most of that large-scale gold mining is in Eureka County most of the people do live in Elko County what what has happened is many of the mining companies that, that operate up there have very very consciously decided to take their purchases of equipment which is subject to, to sales tax in Elko County. So in other words, Elko County gets the sales tax portion of that. Um, the property tax and net proceeds of mines tax, much of that does go to Eureka County. But the companies are, have tried to offset that through their purchasing practices by doing the purchasing in Elko County. The other thing is that the uh, mining companies have have made considerable contributions in the millions of dollars per year to Elko County for infrastructure needs, school needs, and so forth. So they try to, to balance it as much as they can, but it's the political subdivisions are the way they are. It's not, not something that we're going to go in and change. And that's where we have to leave it. And we do want to point out, in the, uh, as we always like to do, that the National Mining Association, not the Nevada Mining Association, is one of our proud sponsors, and it's a pleasure to have you here. We welcome you back anytime. Oh, Fields. thank you very much. We'll be right back on Nevada Newsmakers with the Power Pundit panel. Uh, so fasten your seatbelts right after this. <laughs> This is Nevada Newsmakers. Here at the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, water resources come from fresh, clean groundwater, approved by state permits. The water is pumped from wells to million-gallon storage tanks and then distributed to TRI companies. Another amenity is our investment in a state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant. This disposal system converts waste to clean water for industrial applications. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevada. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers encourages the responsible consumption of beer. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association are sponsors and participants in many community-based efforts such as school education programs, safe ride home, recycling programs, alcohol-free after-prom and graduation parties, safe voting campaigns, and designated driver programs. They are family-owned businesses employing 2,000 Nevadans. They also collect and pay the state excise tax. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association, delivering more than just beer. The resort at Red Hawk offers you two great dining choices. Experience David's Grill and Sports Bar or the Steakhouse at Red Hawk. The Steakhouse has received the Wine Spectator Award of Excellence based on a diverse selection of fine wines. To accompany the wines, the Steakhouse serves certified Angus beef steaks in a variety of cuts, fresh fish, chicken, and pasta dishes. For fun and casual dining, come to David's Grill and Sports Bar. David's is open seven days a week, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The resort at Red Hawk. Always the right choice. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad.
And we're joined, as always, by a great Power Pundit panel today on the program. We have Robert Eidhoven, who is Jim Gibbons' campaign manager, Martin Lockhart with Capital Strategies, who has certainly aligned herself with uh, Dina Titus. And if he's lucky, he'll get a word in edgeways today, Bob Kroll with the Kroll Group. He's actually running right. for the election himself. So. <laughs> I am indeed. I'm running for school board again. You bet. Well, thank you for That's announcing. That's a big race. Thank, thank you for announcing is, right here on our show. You heard it here first. It, it made news. Big race. And now it it's is. very important. Uh, absolutely. Oh, as we have seen around the country, yeah, we're watching right. school board. Dover, Pennsylvania. <laughs> got ousted last Tuesday, has, yeah. Has intelligent design come up on the Carson City It hasn't come board? up yet, but I anticipate that something like that will move, move in this next election season. Yeah. Really? I think You've so. been busy enough with Chuck, uh, Chuck Muth down there, he's right? Been, yeah. He's been working on our board yeah. pretty hard. Yeah. Pretty hard. Let's uh, talk about uh, some of the comments that uh, State Senator Randolph Townsend made on the program last week where he talked about uh, rolling back a lot of the taxes that uh, were imposed over the last four years. What are your thoughts on that happening, Bob? He's running for re-election too, huh? He's running for re-election. <laughs> well, I think, I think it's always, you know, in Nevada, I think, you know, we, we have such a, uh, a, a disparate uh, group of taxes. I think it's always good to take a look at the taxes. And I think that, you know, there may be some room for rolling back. You, I think, it, you know, Nevada's a growing state. Yeah, I, I mean, like we're collecting just gobs of money beyond what we thought we were going to collect. Well, I think that you have to look at, you know, one, you have to quantify what that number is, but, but two, I think it's it's always beneficial to look at look at the tax issues, and take a look at maybe restructuring how we how we tax in the state period. I know we went through that drill two, in two thousand and three, but you know, Nevada really does kind of have kind of a, a jumbled up group of taxes. Well, they're very picky. They pick on gaming. They pick on, on, on business. They pick on mining instead of a broader approach yeah. to taxation. I mean, that's truly what we kind of need to look at. I think it's very easy to, um, I, well, I think it's easier to take a look at the tax structure when you have money yeah. rather than the year they tried to do it when there wasn't any money and they were, instead of looking at the structure and how should Nevada's uh, stable foundation for taxes be developed, they were looking for so many million here, so many million here, so many million here, and that's what they got. In a year when there isn't a shortage of funds, I think it's easier to plan and take a look and review of what is fair, what is stable, what would be a good solid foundation for the state in terms of a tax structure. And maybe it might come a little bit easier to review uh, those but kinds of issues. Without in a bloodbath. Without a blood, uh, bloodbath. With this might surprise you, but Jim Gibbons will probably look, look at rolling back some taxes in his campaign. What? Yeah, Jeez, I know, I know, big shock. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I know that, and he understands that there are some needs that transportation and education needs out there that we need to look at, but uh, government is you not in the for-profit business. You want to throw any specific taxes? Uh, not like not to today. We're, we're Senator still, Townsend uh, what are we? specific. Well, I, we have met with Senator Townsend, and we like the bill that he proposed last time, which didn't make it through and didn't make it to the governor's desk. Uh, that's just one example. I think uh, he has articulated a position where local and county governments are awash, most of them. I know there are some rural areas that are hurting, but uh, some of our more urban uh, counties are awash with cash right now, and the state is actually hurting for some of the money. So there's a dispro disproportionate amount of money in, in county and local government that you don't see in state. I know we have large surpluses this time around, and people like that. It's, it's nice to go into a session to decide who we're going to give money back to. Uh, but I think you see it a lot more at the local and county level today. It's, it's interesting that Time Magazine made Kenny Gwynn one of the top five governors in the nation because of the tax increases that he went over his party to do. I think that's exactly right. And, yeah. and he also made it for giving the you know, money back. And he also got it for the Millennium Scholarship. Yeah. You know, uh, whether you like it or you don't like it, he stood up for a lot of different things and uh, took on some, some things that were not very popular with his party. And, well, you know, and now we have the luxury to kind of look at our tax structure and saying, yeah. okay, because yeah. we're in a good position, we can look and see how we can improve it. Well, yeah. in addition to all cool. the things he got, he also got it in an editorial in the Las Vegas Review Journal. It's worth reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, yes. I, I will leave that sit right where it is. Um, <laughs> what's interesting is, according to the New York Times Today, uh, an article by John Broda, is that in this most recent election that we've had, um, 
the voters in California, Colorado, and Washington State all rejected ballot measures that would have rolled back tax increases. Does that have any bearing on Nevada, or are we pretty much an island uh, on our own at this point? Well, I think it does have a bearing on Nevada, and, and as you know, I've said many times before on this program, I think elections where candidates attach themselves to an initiative petition to get elected uh, promote bad policy for a government. And now we look at California and we look at the gigantic mess that they've gotten themselves into because of initiative petitions. And then any sort of reform, you know, just and more initiative petitions, and they just went down the tubes. California's hands are tied in so many areas. I think we have to guard in Nevada against that initiative petition process really taking hold here in Nevada. Okay, let, let, let's let's assume we're talking about here. Tabor on that. A Tabor, your well, I mean, uh, education, education first, first doesn't cost the taxpayers any money. And it's absolutely it meaningless. Yeah. It is nothing but a campaign ploy to promote the candidate that is sponsoring that initiative. And that's what has to be exposed in this state, is that certain candidates are promoting themselves by running on feel-good, sound-nice okay. petitions. Let, let Robin, I, I, would, I would have to say that if it's meaningless... So were the votes cast by about 56% of the state who supported education first. And it will pass again. So I think it's a little disingenuous to say it's meaningless when voters support You're it. You're right, well, not getting a word in, are you, Bob? No, but you know what? I'm just going to say all politics is local. And, and uh, I don't think you can go to, go, to, go to the bank on what happened. Anyway. Well, so for those see. folks and, that and, understand and the where, legislative that's process. That's where we got to leave it. We'll be right back on the Newsmakers after this. <laughs> you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. South Reno's hot spot for food, fun, and friends is the Tamarack Junction. Play over 480 of the hottest slots and video poker games. Enjoy hot times and sizzling food specials at Sully Sports Bar, Grill, and Nightclub. Watch your favorite game on one of our jumbo high-definition plasma TVs. Enjoy great food 24 hours a day in the dining car restaurant. Or sample the best hot and cold sandwiches in the Whistle Stop Deli. The Tamarack Junction is your junction for fun. South Virginia and the Body Ranch Parkway. Yeah. I tell you, John, this industry has really changed. Tell me about it. You seem to do pretty well last year. What's your secret? <laughs> no secrets. Although I'll tell you something. The smartest thing I did was sign up with Pro Group Management. Really? Yeah, they uh, do workers' comp, right? Yeah, their services are great. Hmm. And get this, they saved me 30%. I've heard they saved others 50%. That works for me. Pro Group Management. Finally, workers' comp that works for you. Reno's best dining values are all at one casino, the Pepper Mill. You can enjoy great savings on our popular specials. Pepper Mill's Coffee Shop offers daily lunch specials, low-carb dining, and all your favorite comfort foods. You'll find sensational lunch specials featuring Reno's freshest seafood, sushi, pasta, and more at Oceano. And early bird specials at Reno's Premier Steakhouse and Romanza Ristorante Italiano. The best values are at the Pepper Mill. Where are you dining? And as always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day, and I'd like you to watch it 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com. I use it to go to sleep with it. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, tomorrow we have on Senator Dina Titus, who's running for governor. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>